Hey everybody, it's Jordan with PDQ.com, and today we're going to talk about uh, looping in PowerShell. Uh, we're going to focus mostly on for each. There's there's two different types. There's for each and for each object. They interact a little bit differently. Uh, mo mo usually, I, I guess we'll do a quick breakdown. The for each is handling an array or a, a series of objects, and it's going to iterate. It's going to load all that into memory, and then go through each one and run a series of tasks. For each object is going to be at the end of a pipeline, so you're grabbing their data and piping that into, which means it loads one at a time and runs it. The, the actions are a little bit different. There's some extreme circumstances where you can see some differences, and uh, unless you're using a whole lot of data, you're not going to really see a significant speed difference. Uh, but that's the, the main, uh, I guess, differences. The real confusing part is for each object has an alias of for each, which is why so many people think that they're the same thing. But uh, my, my tangent aside, we're going to go into the for each side of it. And right here I have a, a temporary command built up here where I'm importing a CSV of john.csv and then we're into a for each. We'll kind of break down each component. And the reason I'm naming this one is instead of going over the usual, hey, here's my array of seven random numbers or one through ten and we're interact with it, uh, we're going to use this to find out who the most efficient killing machine out of the John action stars is. We got McLean, we got Rambo, and we got Wick. So we're going to name this one Action Stars. All right, and all this is doing is this is importing the CSV that we built. We'll actually just run that one real quick. That's not actually part of for each. That's just we, we have grabbed the variable. We have grabbed the array of all the objects. The next part in, we got the for each, and then in parentheses this dollar sign variable. The name of this one doesn't technically matter. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, and what it does is you're basically giving it a placeholder variable and it's how within the for each, how you interact, you can call it with this variable. Uh, with the for each object, it's gonna be instead of naming a variable, it's dollar sign underscore, but once again, I'm I'm off on a tangent here. So we're just gonna name this one, I don't know, guy. So for each guy in, and then we wanna name this one, the, the in part is the name of the variable that we're passing through, in this case, action stars. Actions stars. Let's uh, let's clean this up and remove typo, shall we? <clears throat> All right. Now we have that. As you can see, that's within the regular the parentheses. Next, you have the curly braces, and this is where you're interacting with each object. So if you have a CSV, say with three objects, it's going to go through uh, each all three of those, and for each one of them, it's going to spit out the data based on what you want. So do something here is kind of vague. Uh, the most common we see is uh, like write host or write output, which is what we're going to put put in there. I'm, I'm going to do write host, and I'm sure I hear PowerShell people screaming, no, that's bad, use output. But I'm using host because, uh, you know, it's my video. You can just sit here and watch, and you can judge me. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to go through each one, and we're going to write out the, the name and the total number of kills so we can get the, the first look on which action hero uh, is, is the most deadly. So we're going to do... Parentheses, John, only without the extra case-sensitive part. And then it's dollar sign, and this is where we're calling the variable, in this case, guy. That's what we named it. So basically, within action stars, it's going to go each line, and each line is going to make that row named, in this case, guy. Then we're going to do name. And then, here we go. Has, and then we're going to do just the total number, number of kills here, which is the same thing, since we're still calling up the same variable, not kills. And we're gonna give this one a run. And we can see here, Rambo has 490, John McClain's got 73, and John Wick has 299. So on a sheer number standpoint, Rambo's winning, but it, we have to realize, first of all, Rambo's been doing this since the 80s, or was he late 70s? It was before my time. Uh, he's got more videos, he got five videos, so we know total number of kills, that's great, but is he is he truly the most efficient? Is he the best? Or is he just a stat collector like so many people we see in the Hall of Fame these days? Uh, to do that, we're going to break down, since we have the total number of movies in this variable, we're just going to change it a bit. This is just to kind of see right host where you can do different things to get different results. So instead of has kills, we're going to do, in this one where we're going to be doing division, we want to put this in a, a dollar sign followed by parentheses, which is basically saying we can run this command block within what we're printing, and then dollar sign guy dot kills, and we're going to divide that by uh, guy dot movies. I have to spell it right. 
Uh, I guess we should have kept the has there. Here we go. And then one more parenthesis here. Kills per movie. All right, give this one more run. We can see here, Rambo, 98 kills per movie. That is respectable. No, one, no one's going to judge that. That is fantastic. John McClane with 14.6. Uh, this makes sense. He didn't start off as an action hero. He was just a guy that wanted to visit his wife on Christmas. And then John Wick with 99.6. He has 1.6 repeating kills more efficient than John Rambo. Uh, this obviously doesn't take into account style or weapon choice. I mean, we break down pencils, but just overall, it looks like John Wick might be the ultimate John action hero at this point. With John McClane, I imagine if we had moved the, removed the first movie and just did the following four, his numbers would improve because the first movie was a little bit different, but uh, there we have it. That's enough of my action hero tangent. Let's just kind of break down a little bit more. We can do this one with, uh, with four each. All right, so this one is all pretty straightforward. It's Here's how you get the information. Here's how you interact with it. But it's not a single line of code you can do there. Uh, you could do tests if you want, though, or you could do if statements. It doesn't have to be a, a single line that you're interacting on. You can put further statements uh, in there to, to make it more complex or, or handle the data a little bit better. So in this case, so you could do like a if statement. I say if the kills are greater than 100. It would print that one out there. Uh, one thing is we imported this all as a string. So if you just do greater than 100, it's going to... Uh, it's going to error out just because it's comparing an integer to a string. So you want to make sure your data types are correct if you're using that one. But you can do where, if, then, basically any other statement you want in there within for each. So you can get complex blocks of code interacting with each row of this one. So uh, if we're looking for an actual real example, uh, say if you're interacting with Active Directory accounts, you can grab all the Active Directory accounts you're looking for with get dash A to user and then fine tune by whatever organizational unit you want to look for. And then from there, say the reason you're doing this is if their department is marketing, you want to move them to a different OU, that's where this comes in. So you still do the for each, go through all the users, and you're going to grab the user and the department, and then basically if the department equals this, then perform this action. So that way you're not interacting with each one, or you're only interacting uh, further if there's something you want to change. So overall, the main block is pretty simple. It's just variable, and then the array that you're messing with. And then in the curly brackets, put, uh, put your block of code. But if you're looking to do complex actions, you can get very complex with this one. You can do a lot of really cool things with uh, for each. Looping is a critical part uh, of, of scripting if you're going to be looking to automate your environment. Uh, for PDQ.com, I'm Jordan, and this is where I'm going to hold my pose for the thumbnail. Can you move yet?